Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to make cornhole boards. I've made a set of these a while back, but we have one afternoon to get these made. I'm at my friend Nick's shop and we're gonna handle it today. This project starts off like many other projects, just milling up lumber. I started at the miter saw, cutting the pieces to length, then moved on to the joiner to get one flat face and flat edge, then to the table saw to rip the other edge parallel, and then finally at the planer to bring it to final thickness. I was calling this the world's fanciest set of cornhole boards because we used nice alder plywood with some solid maple for the surround. For the joinery in putting the plywood onto the cornhole board, we're gonna be using rabbits. So we took all of our pieces that were now all dimensioned the way they should be and put a rabbit on one edge of all of them. All right, at this point, we've got all of our pieces uh, done at the joiner, we got a flat side there, then we ran them through the planer, and now we have created a rabbit on each piece. This is actually going to hold our piece of plywood, and that's gonna give it a good bit of strength. Um, I've not seen anybody else do it this way, so I think it's gonna be interesting. Next, we needed to create the miters so that the whole box will go together. For this, I'm just using the table saw and the miter gauge with the blade tilted at 45 degrees. To make the initial cut, it's really simple. Just cut off one side, then be sure to flip it over to do the other side. And this side required a little bit more setup. I did not want anything to bind against the blade, so I used a spacer to start my material on, but by the time the blade would be cutting it, there would be nothing touching on the fence side of my piece. This would allow the piece to not bind and catch on the blade. Once we got all of those miters cut, it was time to assemble them. We used some glue and just put them together with some brad nails. Once we add the plywood in a little bit later, it's going to be much stronger. So we weren't worried about these brad nails doing all of the holding power. Ugh. Did he just spread the glue with his finger? Unsubscribe. The plywood is up next and it's important to leave this as the last step because the size that you cut the plywood is taken from the finished assembled frame. We wanted to make sure that we actually put the frame together and then pulled measurements so that we could cut the plywood to match exactly. We added a little more glue and dropped the plywood pieces down into the rabbits that we created and secured them with a bunch of brad nails. Then we just repeated for the second one before moving on to cut out the hole. Nick worked on sanding the outside maple frame and I moved on to doing an edge treatment. We didn't want any sharp edges, so I put a 1 8 inch roundover bit in the trim router and just rounded over all of the outside edges. Then we switched and he sanded the other one while I put the edge treatment on the second one. Nick didn't have the six inch hole saw that he needed to make the holes in the cornhole boards, but he does have a laser cutter. So I think he came up with something pretty clever. He grabbed some scrap plywood and cut out a six inch circle using the laser cutter. Then with a flush trim bit in the router, he was able to follow the template and cut a perfect circle. Marking out for the legs is not very hard on these things. You do have to keep a few dimensions in mind. 
I will put a link below to some of the official rules for cornhole boards and they state specific things like the height off of the ground that it should be and all of that good stuff. So if you want to look those up, click the link below. For hardware, we just used some bolts and nuts, a split washer so it would stay on there pretty well and we tightened it pretty tight but not all the way. While these are gonna be used outside, they're not just going to live outside, so we just went with a simple Danish oil. We brushed on a coat and let that be enough. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click any of the links that I have down below to check out the different tools and materials that I used in this build. Also, go visit my website. I've got a store there that I sell different templates and different goods and items. Uh, it really helps me out a lot when you shop there. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you on the next project.